Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and today I'd like to share with you a pattern from Studio E. And this pattern is for a tree skirt, but I think it would look great also as a table topper, especially if you have a nice big round table. Now I'm going to make this in the fabric they recommend, and it is called Joyous Noel, and it is a beautiful line of fabric. It's very rich and elegant. And you can print out this pattern, and I'll put a link in the description for you. And when you do print it out, you're going to have to enlarge some templates. You do have two corner templates and a large fan template. Now the pattern consists of three fans that are going to be sewn together. You're going to need ten that are cut out of a solid fabric. And then you're going to have five each of this pattern. And these are very easy to put together. And I've already got the blade pattern all cut out. Now I would recommend that you take and draw a line right down the center of the fan blade. And you can mark that line by just folding it in half and then draw that line. And with that line, it's going to be very easy to place them on the fabric to cut them out. And that line down the center is going to be the straight grain of the fabric because you do not want to cut them on any kind of an angle because then the straight of the grain is not going to be down the center and it will stretch and get distorted. So to find the straight of the grain, have your fabric folded in half and with your ruler, make sure that you have a straight line that's marked on the ruler. And that way you're going to be able to use all these measurements as you go down. Slip your pattern underneath the ruler. Keep the straight edge straight on the ruler and then with that drawn line you are able to place this pattern anywhere that you need it following a straight line on the ruler. And once the lines are lined up with the bottom and the top you're able to pin the pattern piece in and you can either rotary cut along the edge or just cut them out with scissors. If you feel more comfortable, you can actually print out five of these and then place them on top of the fabric and by cutting it in a double layer, you will have your 10 blades. So if you're going to rotary cut them, just place the edge along the template edge, making sure you're not going to cut into the paper and just cut down and do that for all sides. Now you can remove the pattern and take it off, use the paper again. For the next blade, again, line the straight edge of the ruler on the fold and again just find the placement where it is going to fit the best. And you're going to be able to keep the line that you drew again straight on the ruler. Pin and cut them out. So your fabric's going to look like this when you're done with all of these jagged edges, but they all were on the straight of grain. One thing I like to do when I am in a situation like this, I don't want to waste all of this fabric. So before I move it, I take time and I cut out squares that will fit. Some of them might be five inches, some of them might be four inches, but I'll take time and I'll cut out squares. And I'll put these in a little box and I'll have them ready for another project. And it's sure a lot easier to do when the fabric's already out. So now I have my 10 blades ready to go. You will now need to make a total of 10 blades to go with the 10 solid blades that are not pieced. And the centers of the blades are going to be the same. The center blade is 6 inches by 8 inches. So you're going to need a total of 10, 5 for each blade. The bottom of the blades, the fabric is different. This one has a writing on it and so does this, so I've made sure that I've kept the writing in the same direction. These pieces are 5 inches by 7 inches. You will need 5 of each. The top of the fan is going to have a point and it's going to start with just squares. These squares are 5 and an eighth and you're going to need 5 for each. And then the templates come in. The templates are going to cut your fabric so that the fabric will fit on the side of this triangle and then the units will be sewn together. Now to do these templates I would recommend that you take them and you fussy cut them because when you fussy cut them you're going to be able to choose where the design is going to be 
or you're going to be able to make sure that the writing is going to stay in the right order. So you're going to need five of each for each blade. So you're going to need five left and rights, five left and rights. Now we need to sew these units together. So the first step would be to sew these template pieces onto the side of the square. So you will need to take this and put it along this side because you're going to sew a quarter inch along here. However, you need a quarter inch to hang out on this little point. And to do that, you can take a ruler that has a quarter inch, place the square so that the square lines up against the quarter inch on the ruler. Then make sure that the point here comes to that quarter inch. And that's going to give you that quarter inch hangover that you need. Pin it and stitch down. Now place the square along that quarter inch mark again. The point again is going to come out the quarter inch. This needs to come in this direction because you will need to sew right over top of it. So I have that point a quarter inch out from that square underneath. And bring it to the machine and sew your quarter inch seam. And when that seam has been sewn and you open it up, you will have a quarter inch right here in that point. So make sure you use your long sides, sew on one side, then the other, making sure the little tips are a quarter inch out. And press them so that the square stays flat in the back. And when they're pressed, cut off the little dog ear. So we have five each. Next, take the six inches by eight inch rectangles and sew them onto the 10 units that you just finished, right like that. You'll be able to get a nice point if you sew with that pieced unit on the top when you sew the two together, because you're going to be able to see your stitching line there and you'll be able to stitch exactly the quarter inch. And press all the seams going towards the end. Now we need to sew the two ends onto the rest of the blades. And the sizes are different, so you will need to find the center of each. Just take and fold in half and just give a finger press and you'll be able to flip them up, match these seams that you just pressed with your finger and sew a quarter inch. And if you are using the fabric with writing on it, make sure you have your writing in the right direction. And press the seam again going towards the bottom. Now we need to cut this up to match the blades. And you're going to take the template and place it on top, making sure that the edges in the top match that square. And cut down and discard these pieces. The blades are cut out, so we have five of one color variation, ten of the one solid piece of fabric, and five of the second variation. Now to sew them together, you're going to sew them in units of two one of the solid pieces and one of the blocks. Now you have five units of each pattern and you're going to sew those together. And as you keep sewing the blades together, it's going to get bigger and bigger. So you need to sew the entire unit together, leaving one edge open. And that edge is important because you won't be able to get this around the tree unless you have one edge open. All the blades are sewn together except the one opening. Now if you're going to want to change this into a tablecloth, you will need to sew that last blade together so you have a complete circle. And then for the middle, you need to make a circle to applique in here. I've just taken a dinner plate that I have found to fit and I've made the circle. In the middle of the circle, I've cut out a nice big chunk so that I have a center open. Having that center open gives me an opportunity that I can put something right in the middle if I wanted to. And once I've decided what the center piece is going to be, I'm able to cut along the outside. And by applicating that nice big circle in the center, it finishes the table topper off. Now to quilt this, you'd quilt it the same way. You would put your three layers together and quilt it. If you're going to quilt it as a tree skirt, it is still the same way. You put the three layers together and quilt it. Then you will be able to trim the batting off all the way around the edges and around the center, putting your binding on and finishing your binding. And if you'd like matching stockings for the fireplace to go with your tree skirt, well, they have a panel 
with the stockings already designed for you. So be sure to take advantage of the free pattern from Studio E, regardless if you're going to make a tablecloth or a tree skirt. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.